Hi, I'm Arthur Haynes, and I'm here to speak to you today about the nutrition of wild plants. And because this is such an important foundation to the writing and the teaching that I do, and it's one of the answers to the questions, why choose to forage for wild food, I thought it would be best if I took a little bit of time to address this question. One of the great things is in the recent years, recent decades, there has been more work looking at the nutrition, in other words, the vitamin and phytochemical content of wild plants as compared to their domesticated or cultivated counterparts. And I'm going to take you through a brief slideshow today that looks at nutritional content of these two types of plant foods that we ingest. Now, before we get started on that slideshow, I want to summarize the differences between wild plants and cultivated plants. And there are four important differences to bring up in terms of their nutrition. One of those is wild plants are, on average, more nutrient dense than cultivated plants. And now I'm referring to things like vitamins and minerals. And in some cases, these differences are manifest and we can see 20, 30, 40, even 50 times the level of vitamins or minerals in the wild plants as those found in their cultivated counterparts. Another difference is the phytochemical content. In other words, wild plants are much more endowed with various chemicals that have been largely bred out of cultivated plants. Many of these phytochemicals are of great benefit to us. In other words, they act as antioxidants that protect us from premature aging, the sun's rays from cancer, and things of that type. We also see that some of these phytochemicals are antimicrobial and keep us protected from pathogens. And further, some of these phytochemicals even serve to directly attack cancer or improve our immune functioning over the course of our entire body. So this is another difference that we see between wild plants and cultivated plants. A third difference that exists is a more balanced ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. In the American diet, we see a heavy reliance on vegetable oils and grains, which are very high in omega-6 fatty acids. These are fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, in other words, they would be liquid at room temperature, that are pro-inflammatory, and as well, they depress the functioning of the immune system. Wild foods tend to be more endowed with omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory and stimulate the function of the immune system, making them much more beneficial for our health when they occur in a more balanced ratio. And lastly, and fourth, wild foods tend to be lower in calorie per unit mass. This means that they contain more fiber. This is very important for the forager because it means that we get less calories back for our work, but we get more nutrients, more beneficial phytochemicals, and better ratios of omega-3 fatty acids for that work. Let's start by looking at provitamin A. Spinach is widely considered to be one of the better leaf sources of this vitamin, and its foliage contain 8,100 units, international units, of provitamin A per 100 grams of leaves. If we just look to one of our common species, like the woolly violet, it contains 20,000 international units of provitamin A in its early season leaves for the same mass, which is approximately two and a half times the amount of provitamin A. One of the real myths is that oranges are high in vitamin C. And though they certainly do contain an amount of vitamin C, I wouldn't describe it as high. Most measurements put this at 50 milligrams of ascorbic acid per 100 grams of tissue. Know that uh, some of the higher measurements put it at 72 milligrams of ascorbic acid. If we simply take and look at many leafy wild greens, they easily surpass oranges, sometimes two and three times the amount of ascorbic acid. However, if we take one of the better examples, looking at beech rose that grows along the eastern coast of the United States, it contains a little over 2,700 
milligrams of ascorbic acid per 100 grams of tissue, meaning it has about 37 times the vitamin C level as the best measurement that's been provided for the orange. It is important to note that these studies showing that wild plants have higher concentrations of vitamins and minerals seem to be universal. In other words, no matter where they are studied, what continent or what country, we continually see wild plants coming out above the values of cultivated plants. For example, from a study from Turkey that looked at the mineral composition of a number of wild plants compared to cultivated species grown in that area, radish was the species with the highest potassium value, and it had 370 milligrams of potassium per 100 grams of tissue. A wild plant that grows in Turkey called Iringo had a mean potassium value of 3,453 milligrams. Note that that's almost nine times the, the potassium content. To finish out this nutritional comparison, let's take a look at wild rice, one of the really important species of plants here in our household because it forms such a significant part of our calories through the seasons. Studies that have looked at the B-complex vitamins of this plant show that it's higher and significantly higher in thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin as compared to cultivated rice. Further, its mineral content, specifically iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and zinc, are higher than in cultivated rice, and its protein content, as well as its omega-3 fatty acid content, are also higher than cultivated rice. So the fact that wild plants are more nutritious than cultivated plants, is this an important fact for you to pay attention to? And the answer is a very loud yes. Our body's ability to function, to heal after injury, and to defend itself from pathogens, including cancer, is all based on the nutrients that we take into our body. The more nutrients we take in, the better off we are, so long as that is not followed by an excess of calories, as would be required to take in the nutrients we need based on a civilized diet. Remember the work of Weston Price, who was a dentist that toured the world in the 1930s. He found that people living on their traditional diets were taking in 10 times the fat-soluble vitamins and approximately four times the water-soluble vitamins than we take in here in the United States. That is being recommended by our USDA. Also very important to remember that the nutrients we take into our body are very important for us to have healthy children. Children who do not have learning disabilities, children who do not have allergies and intolerances to various foods and materials, and children who have correct smiles. In other words, their teeth are not crooked, crowded, or impacted. I feel sometimes it is best put in this way. If we look at how long Homo sapiens has been on this planet, when we go back to the archaic types, our species is about 500,000 years old. And for almost that entire time, we have consumed wild foods. In other words, our genetics is based on a diet of wild plants, animals, and fungi. Once we start adding in cultivated plants, and domesticated animals, we start seeing health problems arise. Even amongst the hunter-gatherers who were making recent shifts over to some of their foods being agricultural crops, we started to see a reduction in the size and the stature of these people. We see that they were more prone to infection, and that also includes a higher incidence of cavities. Wild foods are truly the key to us enjoying healthy lives, lives that are free of degenerative disease. And they are also the key to us passing on healthy genes to our children so they too can enjoy healthy lives.